I get turned around and lost a lot. My college friend likes to remind me that every morning I'd leave our dorm and I'd turn the wrong direction when heading to class. He thought this was hilarious. It turns out this happens to me in video games as well. So as a concept artist, how can we shape objects to help players from getting lost? Welcome to episode 14 of the Concept Art Playbook. I've teamed up with a game designer to create a series of 30 concept art challenges for you to tackle. Today, Ryan has me designing the town layout for a dungeon crawler game called Cave Kingdoms. The brief reads, the player uses a simple visual scripting system to manage AI control over a knight, a mage, a thief, and an archer as they hunt for treasure in the deepest, darkest, strangest caves in the land. The player has just arrived in an underground city looking to restock supplies, upgrade their skills and equipment. And in this challenge, Ryan's provided a general layout for where the town will exist. It's a cave interior with a waterfall up top and two branching rivers. He's also given me a list of the buildings that we're going to need to include. But I can add extra stuff to make the town feel, you know, more lived in. These are just the essentials. The challenge is to make a city layout, but not just randomly placing buildings here and there. What we want to do is to visually reinforce the player loop. Because think about it, the players, they come back from a mission, they go shopping, they make upgrades, and then eventually they leave town again for another mission. And this is something that the player is going to do every mission. So what we want to do is make the town layout as streamlined as possible. Because unlike a real town, which developed with no single direction in mind, we know exactly what this town is going to be used for. So the first thing I'm going to do here is think about this unordered list of buildings and put them into groups. I could describe it as there being guilds, civic buildings, and shops. So I'm going to place these buildings next to one another in the town, and in doing so, I've created districts. Next, I want to think about the player's path. This is the physical embodiment of the player loop. They're going to start at a front door somewhere, they're going to go through each district, and then they're going to leave town wherever they entered. And Ryan's cave diagram doesn't actually indicate an entry point. But one thing I like about it is this waterfall right here. This is a dramatic feature. So if we place the grand entrance opposite the waterfall, just imagine it. You're walking through these front gates. The first thing you're going to see is a huge wall of water in the background. That just seems like a good fit to me. So the entrance is right here. With that established, let's put in the loop. And in order to make this as simple as possible, I'm going to add an extra bridge here, even though Ryan only has the two here on the map. And in doing so, it just makes a simple, streamlined path to follow. And luckily, doing that actually leaves us with three spots for districts. So now we've got a visual puzzle. We know what buildings need to go in each district, we know where the path needs to go, and we know where the entrance is. So how do we design the shapes of the buildings? A fantastic strategy is to use the Gazalt principle of enclosure. What you see here are not random line segments. An instant after you saw this image, your brain immediately filled in the gaps and you understood that these were filled shapes. This is the power of enclosure. Let's look at this backyard outside of a museum. Here I've drawn two low walls and a little pond here in the middle. Now if I added just a couple tiny little lights recessed into the ground, we immediately understand this as two spaces. There's a center area and a border area. Okay, so as a minor variation, let's cut a pathway down the center of this space. I've also added a door on the opposite side of this courtyard. So maybe what we're looking at here is like an interior courtyard in an office complex that you'd cross when going between buildings. By aligning the edges of the pond, I've created some invisible borders. Previously, we thought of the interior grouping as a single shape, and the border as another shape. But by cutting a path through the center, now we have three spaces. We have the walkway, we have the left interior, and we have the right interior. Now this principle works at any scale. Let's pretend this blue blob is one of the districts. Then I carve a road out of the center. After that, with smaller lines, I'll carve these larger masses into smaller and smaller divisions. What we've got here are little alleyways between buildings. And I can go through and add a bit more variety around the edges. You know, I imagine that these buildings weren't all planned at the exact same time. They were built organically over time. But through the Gazalt principle of enclosure, we can still readily see the implied big shape. 
So even though we can identify there are a number of individual buildings, their shapes communicate an implied border, which brings us back to the cave. Let's apply this technique to our visual puzzle when we're trying to carve out these three districts in the cave. After some time sketching, here's what I came up with. Now at a glance, this might look overwhelming and complicated, but you can see how I'm using the same techniques as I did in the demo to guide the player through town. First, I've grouped similar buildings into districts. Then I've used visual enclosure and shaped the buildings to reinforce this district separation. Now the rivers are really important here as well. They're helping to make that border even more obvious. And then finally, I've made a clear looping path through the districts, which is really just gonna streamline that player loop, that little shopping trip that they're gonna do in between every mission. For a player entering town, this goes a long way to helping them comprehend the structure and the function of the town. They might still get lost from time to time, but it'll create an almost magical, invisible logic to their play experience. So let's check out your version of this homework. In Manifest Destiny, a first-person survival game, the player is traveling on a darker, grittier version of the Oregon Trail. Your homework is to design a walled fortress layout based on this diagram that Ryan has provided. Using the principle of enclosure, see if you can design a layout that helps players quickly understand this fortress layout. Make sure to click the link below the video to download your diagram. And have fun with this one. Take your time, and when you're finished, I'll see you in the next lesson.